My name is Stephanie Reno, and I am the Director of Clinical Practice and Training at the Cohen Veterans Network. And I work um, at the side of Washington, D.C. in Silver Spring, although currently I'm, I'm working at home in D.C. Um, and my main job is to ensure that CVM clinicians are prepared to provide the highest, highest quality evidence-based care to veterans, veteran families, and military families. And I do that through um, running a robust training program to train our clinicians and overseeing uh, clinical practice in the, across the network at all of our different sites. And so my background is in social work. I am a proud social worker. And I started off, um, and most of my work prior to coming to CBN has been working um, in the VA and Department of Defense, um, offering clinical care to veterans, to active duty military, to military families. Um, and my, my focus of care um, during my time at VA and DOD was in working with folks with substance use disorders and with post-traumatic stress disorders, although I have provided clinical support to couples and families um, with a variety of different concerns. So um, I'm going, today we're going to talk about grounding. Grounding is something that has, um, is used really widely in mental health, in spiritual health, in different areas um, to help people to get centered. So um, I'm going to offer my definition of grounding, but know that there are lots of different ways to think about that. And I'm going to encourage you, if you, if you find these strategies to be helpful, to, to dig in and see what different options, definitions, and strategies work best for you. So to answer the question, what is grounding? Um, grounding is a really simple set of strategies to help you to maintain your focus outward on the present moment rather than inside your head. Um, it's a really active exercise or set of exercises. Um, it engages and uses all five senses. So you can try a lot of different ways to use, use your body and your body's abilities to get you grounded. Um, while I say that it's simple, it's definitely not easy, um, like most simple things in life. And it's a type of mindfulness strategy but it's definitely more active and more externally focused than other types of mindfulness strategies. So if you do engage in um, mindfulness exercises and you have a mindfulness practice, you'll see that this is, is on, this, on the spectrum of mindfulness and that it serves a really particular purpose. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see how you think that this fits into your overall mindfulness practice, if that's something that you already do. Um, grounding can be really helpful when um, your brain is doing that thing of moving into the future or into the past. Um, it helps to bring it into the present moment by focusing outward instead of up in our head where the past and the future um, both live. So, to help highlight, because I, I understand that that definition can be still a little bit vague, um, we'll talk about how it's used. And then what we're going to do today is go through um, different types of strategies, different types of mindfulness strategies to help really bring it to life, and we'll practice them together. Um, so how mindfulness is used and, and what, it's, what its purpose is. Um, to be used when you're overwhelmed, when you're stressed, feeling stuck in the past, or feeling anxious, uh, keyed up, or worried about the future. Um, it's, a, it's a really great practice for when the brain is really busy and feels out of control. So many people find it helpful to be used when you're stressed out, when you're frustrated, anxious, um, many people use it for substance use cravings, um, if they're trying to stop using substances and they want to interrupt that cycle in the brain that is telling them that they, they want or need a substance. It can be a great way to, to interrupt that. Um, 
I find it really helpful for me when I'm stuck in a rehearsal and in a future thinking. So what I mean by a rehearsal that I think that many of you can probably relate to is when something happens and maybe I'm going to approach a person about it um, or something happened, even it, this can be almost in the past as well, something happened and I'm thinking about, I should have said this, or if it is future focused, I'm going to say this and then if they say that, I'm going to respond with this. Um, so I'm waiting for that event to happen and I'm doing this rehearsal. And while sometimes that can be a helpful process to think through and be proactive about what we want to say or how we want to approach something, many times our brain takes that a little too far, it goes on a little bit too long, or it's about the past and it already happened and our opportunity to say something has gone. Um, but our brain can go get stuck in that cycle and feeling the feelings that um, relate can can be pretty heavy and this is a good way to step out of that if you're if that rehearsal process is bringing up frustration anger upset so there are lots of different grounding exercises and resources um, if you google grounding you can find big giant lists of different grounding exercises that are really great there isn't an owner of grounding so the nice thing is you'll see what works for different people and you can try it out and see if it works for you. One of my favorite resources is from the Seeking Safety book that's written by Dr. Lisa Najibet. Um, it was written in 2002, but it has a, a big list of grounding exercises in there. And you can even find that list in different places online um, outside of the book. So grounding is also great for kids. It can help them to interrupt negative thought cycles and um, so something that if you find it helpful for you, you can help to share it with other people who might find it helpful. So let's bring this to life. Um, instead of talking about it theoretically, it sounds really great and, and what it can do may be helpful. Um, so if, if we define grounding as a simple set of strategies to bring your focus outward into the present, into the external world, Let's think about how we can take our brain and focus it and turn it out into the room. So I'm going to start by sharing some mental grounding exercises. So mental grounding is a way to use your mind and its focus to bring it out into the present moment. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, one of my favorites is an alphabet game. Um, if you remember this, you're from a car ride when you were young, your parents were actually teaching you grounding. Maybe you were getting frustrated asking them a bunch of times, um, are we there yet? And feeling those feelings of being trapped and frustrated and annoyed at your sibling, or maybe it's just me. Um, but you use that alphabet game as you're driving in the car and seeing what you can see that starts with certain letters that helps bring your brain out of that, out of that cycle and out into the world. So. Um, you can do this right now with me. So looking around the room, what starts with A? You can't see my room, um, but when I'm looking around, A is one that I'll have to get creative with. If, you, if you've got the chat available for you and wanna throw something in that you see in your room that starts with A, um, I'd be happy to steal yours. I can get creative at this. I see an angle at my desk here. Anyone else have an A that they see in their space? Alarm clock, apple. I should have brought an apple up when I started this. <laughs> How about B? Anything in your space? So I've got a huge amount of bookshelves right here. So I'm covered on books. Someone else has books as well. How about C? Anything C? I have my water cup, coffee, candle. Chair. Um, D. I've got a door over here. Anything else? How about E? That ears. <laughs> I'm not wearing earrings, but maybe you are. Eraser. Oh, I, I have an eraser over here, too, in my pencil cup. F. A 
flag. Okay, get creative. I have this is this office is also a guest room. There's a foam mattress over here. Cool. So as you see, you're using the space around you, you're interrupting the thought process, and your brain is is doing work in the moment externally outside of your brain. So you're you're kind of going through, you're you're noticing things, you're identifying them, you're looking around, you're using your sense of sight, you're using the language part of your brain to kind of name things. I don't know about you, but I love to get really creative, like so mattress and things. So I start to see how I can almost manipulate the things around me, like the angle on my desk, if you remember. Um, you're using your brain and your mental capacities to bring yourself outside of whatever's swirling around in your head and um, do that with the alphabet. So another couple of ways you can do this is counting. Um, so is, there, is there one of something in my space? Uh, I have one lamp. Um, what about two? I have two computer monitors. So that's another way. You're using your brain and your mental capacities to interrupt the thought cycle. Um, you can try saying the alphabet backwards. <laughs> I find this particularly tough and it has to go into forward and then back to backwards so that can keep your brain busy. Um, so the idea is to do something that is pretty neutral. So it's not gonna bring up really strong um, negative emotions in the process. So you want to make sure that when you're doing, engaging in the mental exercise that you're being really gentle with yourself. But if you can't find something with a D, you move on and you try the next letter. Um, you, you want to engage in a curious and compassionate with yourself in the process. Um, so if you're doing the alphabet backwards and you're getting frustrated, maybe time to try something else or maybe time to give yourself some compassion, have a little laugh and, and try again. Um, so reading is a good way to do this, but often reading, right, words bring out sentences and, and ideas and emotions. So you can read something backwards just to focus in on the letters. So you can look at a sign or a book or something in front of you and just recite the letters. Um, I've done this personally with my keyboard in a meeting if I need a, a bit of a breather or a mental break to read the different letters on my keyboard because it's not particularly related to anything. It's a piece of it. So there are just different, some different ways that you can use your brain um, and your focus. Um, the next category I'm going to talk about is mental or body, body focused grounding. So using your body um, to ground yourself. I find this to be really helpful because although our mind and our body are connected, often they can feel really disconnected. It's a way to, to pull everything together um, to use it. So I'm gonna walk you through a quick exercise to use your body as a grounding exercise. Um, so I like to close my eyes when I do this, if that feels safe and comfortable for you, you're absolutely welcome to. Otherwise, just a downward gaze and find a really neutral gaze where you're not focused in on too much can be really helpful. So I'm gonna encourage you to start to feel your body in space. If you've been in this body, in this position, potentially throughout this call, but now I want you to tune in and see, can you feel your clothing on your body? What do you feel? How does it feel? And does it feel different at different points of your body? What is the temperature of your body like? Is it different in different places? Maybe the parts exposed to the air are a little bit cooler and the parts of your body under your clothes are a little bit warmer. Can you feel your socks inside, <laughs> your, your toes inside of your socks or your shoes? Can you maybe give them a wiggle or push them down into the floor? And just feel how your body responds to that simple exercise. And again, noticing if you have different abilities in your body to meet that with compassion and maybe move back to a different part of the exercise. That you were you were better able to do is totally fine. Maybe pushing your feet into the ground or taking your palms, placing them together, pushing in on them. And noticing how something so simple, what else does it activate? I'm pushing my palms together, but now I feel my biceps and chest and my mid-back. 
Can you feel your abdominals supporting you and keeping you lifted? You've been sitting this whole time potentially. And now take a notice that there's a huge amount of effort that it takes to keep your upper body and your torso lifted. Wonderful. Can you feel how the air moves in and out of your lungs and maybe through your nose and your mouth? Okay, we'll take a moment, float our eyes open, and return back to our conversation. So if you want to mention in the chat box what you noticed and how that felt, you notice that um, out in, a, in maybe other settings where you've done something where you're quiet and tune into the body, maybe at the end of a yoga class, it might be a little bit more open. In grounding, we want to really bring the focus and maybe keep it active and moving throughout different sensations in the body and in different ways because we are using, if you remember, grounding to keep us focused in a time of distress. We've got to be a little bit more active because if we just lay down, we'll probably go straight back into that distress. So it's a way to keep the brain busy, to move through different parts of the body, and to stay focused um, on something outside of your thoughts. Okay. So another way that you can use your body is to stretch. You can move your body in whatever way feels good and, again, within your own ability, in, in whatever way feels comfortable and pain-free for you. Um, another way that we can use our body in grounding is to use our hands to pick up an object and examine it. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, I'm always fiddling with a pen. If you've seen my hands flying around already throughout this call, that's something that I do is talk with my hands quite a bit. Um, but taking a pen or marker or something that you have available, picking it up and being truly observant of it and noticing that in our lives we're around things all of the time. And if you're, you've been at home like I have, I've been around the same thing. We almost stop, stop noticing things that are familiar. So you can pick up your pen and notice what it feels like at different parts and go through with your mind and feel different pieces. How does it feel? Is there a difference in temperature? Is something sharper, smoother? And you can use your body with a different object in that way. Now the last um, type of grounding I'm gonna talk through is called soothing grounding. And this is one of my favorites. I am a social worker, so um, <laughs> it's, it, a lot of these exercises pair both um, pair different types and there aren't really big lines in between types of grounding. Um, this is just a way to categorize because often if you like one type or one exercise, you might like other types. Like I really like mental and I really like soothing. Um, and I'll maybe be more open to trying things in those categories because I know that they work well for me. So both a physical and soothing is to select a word or statement, um, a word maybe like calm or a statement like, I can get through it, or my, my soothing statement is, I am here. Um, and I take a big inhale, say the statement in your head, and then take a big exhale. So let's try it together. And we'll try it for one minute. So just pick a statement, doesn't need to be a perfect statement, something that, that you wanna try, and let's try it together. So take your breath, so whatever interval feels good. It might be really, really, really long inhales and really long exhales. But noticing on that inhale when you're filling up with air, just say your soothing statement and then just let it all go. Big inhale. Noticing if any judgment creeps in. And noticing if your brain is going in other places. Just bring it right back to the grounding exercise. Using your mind to focus on the physical sensation and control of inhaling and exhaling. And using your mind to bring that statement forward every time that you find a big inhale. And we'll do one more together. 
and a big exhale. Beautiful, float your eyes open if they happened to close. Another soothing exercise I like to use is what would your best friend say? Often when we are stuck in a really negative cycle, we might not be talking nicely to ourselves. So think through what would your friend say um, and, and what would they tell you? Um, there's other types of soothing grounding things that I love are keeping a motiva motivational quotations around and things maybe you can read through it three times really slowly. I've got a big, big, long quote that I really, really enjoy and it's actually on my wall over here and just reading through it and going through it again. Um, so those are, this is just a really brief introduction to grounding. I encourage you to try different activities, some of the ones I've mentioned and others, but I'm going to give you some tips before um, we open up for questions. So some tips are to do it long enough for it to work. So if you're feeling a really, really big feeling, doing like we did A through D of the alphabet and then returning back to that thought cycle, you probably haven't given yourself enough time to calm down. Um, when we look at the body and physiological reaction to anxiety, which is often replicated in other sort of big feelings, it can take almost 15 to 30 minutes to come down from that peak of a really anxious moment. So you may not be able to ground for 15 or 30 minutes, but just knowing that, that that space is needed. So having a really realistic expectation will help set you up for success. Um, you know, don't, I always say, don't look out the window for 35 seconds and expect to solve your problem. We go, look, there's this tree, there's birds, what else can I observe? Okay, you know, are, are my problems fixed? Um, grounding isn't about problem solving, in fact. It's about, um, it's about taking a break from that negative cycle, from that upset, so that you can pull back, you can bring your emotions down, and then when you do come back to that problem, which hasn't magically been fixed by looking out your window, you're able to approach it with a clearer mind from a place of more neutral emotion. So I encourage you to try lots of different strategies to see what you prefer. Um, and know that different strategies might work at different times. When I'm really mad, that soothing statement doesn't work for me, and that's okay. That's when I need to go into the more mental activities. And that's just me. You'll see what works for you. Um, I encourage you to practice and practice when you feel really good. My analogy, this is the only sports analogy that I have in my life, um, is thinking about when you try out, a, when teams try out a new play. Do they try it out in the Super Bowl at the most important time? No, they're not like, hey, let's give this a whirl. They practice it. They practice it on the field. First, they usually draw it out and look at it together. And then maybe they run it through. And then maybe they scrimmage it, right? And then they're going to bring this practice out into real life. So we want to practice ground, grounding. I always encourage people to practice it when you're bored. Um, your feelings might be pretty neutral. It gives you an activity to do, but you kind of build up and gain comfort with those exercises, and then you can start to use them. I like to use it when I'm bored or when I'm impatient and waiting for something. It's not super emotional, but I'm kind of just sitting there tapping my nails, maybe do some grounding instead. I don't like to wait. <laughs> um, and with any positive coping skill, I encourage you to share it with others and rely on them to help you. Um, for one, it will probably help them because grounding can work for anybody, um, but it can also give them the trigger to say, hey, have you tried any of your grounding skills? You seem really teed up or you seem like you're kind of going through the same thing over and over again. So you can use it to help educate others how to be supportive of you. So um, I am going to open up for any questions if you want to throw them into the chat right now. I am available to answer them. Um, but if you are going to pop off, I encourage you to stay safe, stay healthy, um, stay connected to CVN because we have more resources coming, resources for learning, connection, and other skills uh, on this channel. And we will really look forward to sharing them to you in this new format. So um, I'm going to stay on and answer anything I can if there's um, something I can help you with otherwise. Um, have a wonderful afternoon.